They say that I talk a lot, and you know, it's true in a sense. That when I get going on a subject, I have something to say, and I keep going. Because each thing that I have to say, it's a path. Each, each, each step you take down the path, you find more things to, to look at, and more further paths to take, to choose from. But there is a quantum leap, a quantum leap of difference between talking a lot because you have a lot to say and talking a lot because you are deliberately saying as little as possible. You are creating a deliberate smoke screen. And this is what the hustlers, this is what the politicians do because they are, in fact, hustlers. They are, in fact, hustling you. And all of their talk is flim-flam that's, that's in design to say less than nothing. Not only to say nothing, but to say less than nothing. The more they talk, the more you know that what what's really going on is com what's really going on is completely the reverse of what they're saying and what they're talking about. It's all flim-flam. It's all a hustling job. They're a hustle, and you're the hustle. You're the hustle that they're hustling. You're the victim that they're pickpocketing. You're the sucker that they're pickpocketing. They're picking your pockets. And then you will go on being victims as long as you allow it, as long as you are willing and complicit partners in this hustle. That's what it amounts to, ladies and gentlemen. You are complicit partners in your own hustling. You are being ripped off because you are participating and allowing and encouraging those who will rip you off to continue to do so as much as they want. The more the merrier. And the more they rip you off, the more you sit, you sit there and you say, oh, thank you. Thank you for ripping us off. Please, rip us off some more. And that's why you re-elect these people year after year. That's what you're saying. Each time you shuffle into the voting booths and say, Oh, I will re-elect so-and-so candidate for re-election. And they, they say it on the ballots. They make sure that the voters, even the, that the majority of the voters who don't even have the slightest clue who the actual elected representatives are at the, at the time, don't, don't rec the, na the names of these people doesn't even ring a bell to these to the voters, most of these voters will automatically, as a default choice, they will, as a default, automatically vote for the incumbent, which is specified on the ballot as candidate for re-election. They won't just put the names, the people's names on the candidate and, and say, okay, we'll let the voters make the decision. No, they put the names on the ballot and they, they point out, they, they highlight the names of those who are already, the crooks are already in office, and say, candidate for re-election. So the average voter in Newton shuffles in and clicks whatever switch, says candidate for re-election, without knowing the slightest thing about any of the candidates. But that's the way they choose, and, and if it, and they wouldn't even recognize the name. So if, if it were that, the, that your name had candidate for re-election on it, next to it, instead of the other one, if they, let's say the mistake was made on the ballot printing, you would get elected. You would get elected if you were the first, t if you were the challenger, and the ballots were printed in it with a mistake that said, that posted the words, candidate for re-election next to your name, you would get elected. That's the way it works, ladies and gentlemen. You can conduct the experiment yourself. Set up the experiment to conduct mock elections and see if this doesn't, in fact, take place. Life is a cabaret, old chum. Come to the cabaret.